G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, taking an early look on what we might expect to see in the 2024 AFL trade market. It is early doors, but it's nice to get in early with some of this stuff. So, today we're going to talk about AFL pre-agents, and uh, that is different to AFL free agents. This term refers to players who will actually be one year out from hitting free agency status in a year's time. So we're talking about the end of 2024. So we can expect that this list of players will have clubs circling, which in turn might actually result in a big payday from them if they sign a new contract with their existing club too. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about players who actually come out of contract at the end of 2025 and will be free agents in that time, which means that as early as next year, there will be plenty of interest in getting their signatures one way or another. And this particular situation does provide a bit of a delicate balance for clubs. For the most part, clubs are probably going to be looking at signing their pre-agent stars to lengthy contracts to avoid them reaching free agency. So we could see big paydays, as I suggested. But equally, there are some cases where clubs are more prepared to bite the bullet to some extent and trade their player before free agency. The benefit of that being they get more in terms of a trade, in terms of what they get, rather than a free agency compensation pick if they trade the player before they hit free agency. There's some exceptions to that. Ben Mackay would never have received pick three in a trade and North Melbourne received that. But that is a quirk of the system. So there may be instances where uh, players uh, who are a decent chance to leave as well, clubs might think they might cash in on their increased value and trade them early. So this video is, serves to sort of speculate as to some of the players for a start who are going to be pre-agents this time next year. And it'll be intriguing time to see which ones stay and which ones go. So I'm gonna give you a list of those players and we're gonna go through them one by one. Before I get into it, guys, if you don't mind subscribing to the channel, that'd be great. It's been a great period of the growth of the channel. I really appreciate you all, and I wanna hit 25K by the end of the year. So that'd be great if you could, cheers. So let's crack into the list. Uh, before I do, I will give you some examples of players who actually have been traded as pre-agents. Jacob Hopper last year when he joined Richmond from GWS. Lockie Neal as well signed with the Brisbane Lions a year before reaching free agency. And that was another example where Fremantle had to weigh up the benefit of letting him stay for a year and letting him sign as a free agent. Dylan Shield was another one when he left GWS to join Essendon. And of course, Stephen May as well when he left Gold Coast to join the Melbourne Football Club. So let's get into the list of 2024 players who will be pre-agents. And the first one is one of the biggest names in the league in Marcus Bontempelli. He is literally probably one of the players in the league with the highest possible trade value. And uh, while I must say it's gonna be really tough to see him move as the captain, I can't really see it happening. But what we can probably expect from Bontempelli is that he signs an enormous deal to stay at the Western Bulldogs, which could in turn create its own interesting outcome where other players might be looking around for better salary at other clubs because there'll be a salary cap squeeze perhaps. Another one of these players is uh, Western Australia's Sam Taylor from GWS, who has become one of the best young key backs, if not one of the absolute best key backs in the competition in recent times. Uh, being drafted in 2017 at pick 28, I think it was. And no one really saw that coming when he was taken. Uh, now, I, naturally he's going to have a lot of interest from all clubs, you'd think or anyone on the market for a key defender, but in particular the West Australian clubs. I can see West Coast fishing around. It probably makes more sense in contrast to Fremantle who might not have the same needs as a key defender. So we'll see about uh, Sam Taylor, whether or not he moves as a pre-agent or a free agent, I'm not sure, or whether he just stays at the Giants. But obviously I'm hoping he comes to West Coast. On the topic of the Eagles, Oscar Allen, uh, having been drafted in the 2017 draft, will also be a pre-agent next year, which means that other clubs as well as West Coast will be sniffing around for his signature. He will be heavily targeted, no doubt, uh, but I do think my gut feel here is that similar to Bontempelli, being the likely captain in my opinion, I suppose it's possibly his vice captain. Either way, Oscar Allen, I think he bleeds blue and gold, and it would take something ridiculous for him to leave the Eagles and Western Australia. But we can expect him to accept a huge payday at West Coast, you'd think. Then for the Fremantle Dockers, again from the 2017 draft, their number two selection, Andrew Brayshaw, will also be a pre-agent this time next year. Now he is a Victorian boy, but again, another one who seems very loyal, but another, but equally, the, by the same token, big club is gonna come sniffing around because he is an absolute gun of the competition. I think it could be highly sought after, but again, another one of those players is probably too loyal to realistically leave. Then let's talk about Harrison Petty. This one is a little bit more interesting because we know that he explored the option of joining Adelaide in this year's trade period, having two years left on his contract. So. Uh, he, there was some suggestion that at some point Harrison Petty did say that he wanted to play 
in South Australia but before the end of his career. And of course, he is free agent two years from now. So one year after next year's trade period. Adelaide still need a key position defender. So at Melbourne will have this interesting consideration here where they could cash in and get a better deal for Harrison Petty if they trade him a year early. Or they might consider that they're right in the middle of a premiership window and decide to roll the dice and try and keep him or even just let him go to free agency and hopefully they can do it with another premiership cup in the bank. Harris Andrews also qualifies as a pre-agent, as a co-captain of the Brisbane Lions and a Queenslander. Again, this one's hard to envisage him leaving the Brisbane Lions. Something dramatic would have to happen. Maybe if they win a flag, he'd be open to a big payday if he left the club. But with Brisbane's retention and the strength of their culture, again, that one's hard to really envisage. Luke Davis Uniac, on the other hand, might have a little bit more of a question mark on it. Potentially, I'm just speculating here. But this guy, I think, will definitely get some attention from bigger clubs within the AFL. I think at times he's threatened to explode at AFL level. We saw him get 13 Brownlow votes this year from 14 games. Absolutely unreal, but again, his body has not quite served him well at critical points throughout his career. I think there will be clubs that are potentially competing uh, at the top end next year who would love to look at Luke Davis Uniac as a potential trade option, if not a free agency option in two years' time. I think it would be amazing if North Melbourne did decide to trade him, but if they could get a really good deal for him and North still feel like in 12 months' time they're still in the middle of their rebuild, that's one they could potentially be open to. Jacob Wiedering, the number one pick from 2016, will also qualify as a pre-agent next year. Again, an absolute gun, top-end key defender, and uh, the vice-captain as well for the Carlton Footy Club. So again, he seems like a loyal type, but he will have his suitors. So this will either result in a big payday for Wiedering, and when you consider they're likely to have a salary cap squeeze, maybe a club could really sniff him out. It doesn't seem likely, um, but if he did go anywhere, potentially as a free agent after they've won a flag. I don't know. I'm just speculating at this point. On the topic of key defenders, again, we've got Noah Bolt up from the Richmond Footy Club. A couple of good key defenders or key position players from this 2017 draft, and he has become a very established and quality key defender at AFL level. Again, this might be an attractive option for clubs within the premiership window who want to add a key defender. And we do see there's a market for key defenders and rucks every offseason. It's interesting. But Richmond, potentially, depending on where they're at 12 months from now, could potentially be tempted by a really juicy offer for Noah Bolter if they're looking to cash in on some picks. But with their draft position next year, they're in a good spot. This one seems less likely. There's Darcy Fogarty as well from South Australia. A, uh, well, I was going to say undersized key forward, but it looks like he's grown to 194 centimeters. Uh, But he is obviously an SA local and has put a couple of good years in as that kind of third tall there in the Adelaide Crows setup. But again, I don't think this one is super likely, but he will have his suitors. He's kicked 67 goals from 38 games in the last two seasons, and clubs are always going to be on the lookout for quality tall forward options. So that one will be interesting, but again, not sure how likely it really is. Essendon South Australian talent in Sam Draper, who went number one in the 2015 rookie draft, has uh, really come on to be an accomplished young ruck of the competition. Each year we know that there usually is a market for a ruckman somewhere in the league. And uh, where I see it, I'd be surprised if Essendon are willing to give up Sam Draper, considering they're probably going to be pushing into the top eight, or at least accepting nothing less, I would have thought, at the Essendon Football Club. So I think he'll attract some interest, but it remains to be seen whether Essendon would ever take that seriously. And finally, there is James Warple from the Hawthorne Footy Club, and I think this one has some degree of possibility. I mean, again, it's hard to speculate on any of these, but some of them you can pretty much bank that it won't happen. Whereas James Warple, I think there is some possibility of it because his career has fluctuated a little bit up and down. He's been good, then he's been off a little bit throughout his career after starting his career really well when he was first drafted a bit. 45 or something like that. I think out of all the players I've listed here, he might be the most likely who could potentially seek a move only because I think Hawthorne's uh, really developed a very promising young glut of midfielders at that team. And if he's inconsistent and he finds himself by the wayside, he is one player that I think could potentially move to a rival club. Again, much depends on how the trajectory of his career really continues here with some other really young and talented midfielders in that team at Hawthorne. He could fall by the wayside and find a new home. Again, I'm speculating, but that's what this entire video is. But there you go, guys. That is a list of pre-agents for next year. The primary focus of this video was to get the names out there so you understand who is potentially going to be talked about as a contract option for next year. And I've thrown a little few opinions around about what's likely and what's not. But as always, I hope you're enjoying the content, guys. I appreciate all those who have thrown support behind the channel, uh, both in recent times and all year. You guys are great. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.